is a tutorial for the Zelda shawl and more specifically how I do the colour changes. If you would like then you can buy the bowl pattern which has everything you need as in all the things, the materials, uh, the written pattern and the charts then I will put a link down below for that. I'll also put a link down below for the chart alone, which I will provide for free if you want to follow that to make your own Zelda shawl. This originally featured in an issue of Inside Crochet Magazine. I think it's issue 122. It is. I'll just quickly show you what it looked like. It's a side to side triangle, so you, meaning you start on one point here and then you work all your way to the other point at the other end of the shawl um, and then you make the colour changes as you go row by row. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this tutorial and to do that I've, I've printed off a mini version of the chart. The full chart looks like this and I'll provide a link for you so that you can grab that if you want to. But for this tutorial, I'm going to work for this Diddy version. Uh, it has everything that the big shawl has. So I'm just going to pop that up there. I might drag it down every now and again just to follow it. But to begin, I'm using some double knit. It's the same stuff I used in the shawl. It is um, Coop Knits Socks. Yeah, I think it's called. And it's a merino nylon mix. Um, in the pattern, I think it says for a four mil hook, but this is a Three and a half because I can't find my four. Um, so you begin the pattern by chaining four. And then you want to make one stitch into the first chain. And I'm probably going to say stitch throughout this rather than treble or DC. Because it just gets confusing. But essentially what I mean is a UK treble or a US double crochet. So if I just say stitch, you know which one you're going to be using. So um, that's your first row done. Just looks like that. And then we are going to chain three, which counts as a stitch. Then you turn and in the same space, which is this one here, because this counts as your first stitch. I'm going to make another stitch in there. So that's an increase essentially and then you're going to make one stitch into the top of the the chain that you made at the beginning which counts as one of the stitches on the first row. So for your second row you have what looks like that. Chain three, turn you're not going to make a stitch into this space because this is your stitch. You don't want to make an increase down any of the stitches on this side. You're only increasing down one edge. A stitch in the next space and then two in the top of this three chain. Um, or you can cheat a little bit. If you, if you prefer, you can cheat and just go under it rather than the top of it. It makes a slightly larger hole. But in the grand scheme of things, when your shawl is finished, you probably won't really notice. Chain three. It's a very simple pattern repeat, okay? Same stitch, you are making an increase. And then gradually, as you continue, you will start to see a pattern emerge. And that is of like a narrow triangle. So as I said before, you can cheat and go under that three chain or if you want, you can go in the top. Um, but if I show you, you can see that actually it's quite fiddly. And sometimes this is more of a faff than it's worth. And, you know, I'm a great believer in cutting corners. So, I mean, you can see compared to just going under, it's a little bit more of a fiddle. Chain three. That's our straight side, isn't it? Yes, because look, we've got our increases down there. So you don't go in again, you go into the next stitch. 
I'm filming on my phone for the first time ever, so I don't know what it's like. I can't really see because there's a great big clamp thing in the way of the screen. So I'm sort of guessing that this is okay. I'm not sure whether to do this in real time or not. I may edit some bits out. So you can see a triangle is forming quite nicely there. One, two, three. And we're increasing on this side. And you may be able to hear my kids as well because obviously we're on lockdown. And so everybody is home. And it's not just my kids, it's the neighbours' kids. Their neighbours, kids, <laughs> just go underneath the cheats. And so this bit is pretty simple and it's nice and quick to build up. Um, and then you need to sort of engage your brain a little bit more when you get to the colour changes. But again, that is not actually that hard. Um, you just need to make sure you follow the chart and you'll be fine. And in the pattern that I'll put on Ravelry and Etsy, you do have a row by row written um, pattern as well. So for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to be just doing a mini version. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And because it's a mini tutorial, I am going to stop at eight because that's what I've done for my chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, nine stitches. Okay, I'm on row eight. I get confused quite easily. One, two, three. Okie dokie, and it's at this point that you want to change colour. So, on your last stitch of that row you're going to change colour to yarn B halfway through that last stitch of the row you're going to change to your new colour so if I appear out of breath I've just run downstairs to get my scissors because I no longer want yarn A so I'm going to cut it um, as Pedro, it's my usual trick is forgetting my scissors for a tutorial so I've just run downstairs to get my scissors. Right, I don't need yarn A anymore. So I've cut that. And we're now on to yarn B. One, two, three. Continue as normal. If you want, you can crochet over the ends. Um, in this case, you can probably crochet over both. I mean, check it out when you make it. It might look a bit bulky and you might want to sew them in elsewhere. It's up to you. I'm just going to drop them in a sec for the sake of clarity. I don't want loads of ends everywhere, so I'm just going to take those out of the equation. Okay, so we're here in our chart. Um, and those two blocks represent an increase. So one is pink and one is grey. And they're both going to happen in this last stitch. Cheat method this time. Ugh, without splitting the yarn. This yarn is a bit splitty. Um, so I make the beginnings of the first stitch. And then I'm going to change over to yarn C for the last stitch. I do not want to um, crochet over the end of yarn B. I want that. That's that's a working yarn. They are both now working yarns um, and we'll be using them both in different parts of the pattern. So obviously this is all the grey and this is all the pink. We want those both attached. Don't cut either. One, two, three, 
turn. You need three stitches in the grey and that includes the increase so it's going to be two stitches in the first place and then the next stitch is grey also um, but we're changing over to pink for the subsequent stitches so finish off the stitch in the pink yarn B. Now you can see that there's a little floating yarn thread there so incorporate that into your next stitch just by going underneath it before you go in your next stitch and then effectively you're crocheting it into the work crocheting over it so you can still see it a little bit in the pattern I think I just leave it as doing that once but if you want to incorporate it again into the next stitch like this you can you can still see it's a little bit there but I mean on my swatch here I have I mean you can see that yeah you do get little bumps in the color changes on both sides you can see it a little bit but when you've got a massive shawl that kind of blends in and you don't really notice it so carry on to the end oops so you're increasing by one stitch per row oops and occasionally yeah, I do sort of miss a loop or the thread splits thread yarn and so when you get near a colour change just sort of slow down a bit be aware of where the changes are because it's very easy to add the stitch um, too soon or too late and you don't get the nice smooth lines of the changes and when you come to this stage just sort of um, just pull on your yarn a little bit give it a little tug don't go too heavy on it because you don't want lots of tight pulls and as you can see I'm, I'm I am crocheting with that in mind that thing what's it called again float just to hide it I'm sort of varying it by cheating and also doing doing it the proper way but um, yeah sometimes this bit takes a bit too long I get impatient and then I just cheat two in that because that's an increase okay so that's what it's supposed to look like
for this swatch, I'm coming up to the last increase row. Um, but I just thought I'd mention that you will find that your yarns do start twisting around each other. So every now and again, it's just beneficial to untangle your yarns so that um, it's easier to work. Um, it helps because otherwise you end up pulling them about the place and getting in a bit of a mess and it's quite frustrating. So just bear that in mind. So that's the last increase. And we're going to work along, work along here and come back again. Um, I will just do that off camera um, because it's pretty much exactly the same as what I've done already. So we've made all our increases on our shawl and we're now at the point of decrease. To decrease, it's just crocheting two stitches together. So um, I'm sure you've done this before already. It's very simple. So you start off doing the stitch as normal, but before you complete it, you dive into the next stitch straight away before finishing them off together so that you only have one stitch created when you finish those two together and that means you have crocheted two together so where we were increasing all the way up here now we're going to be decreasing as in going all the way back to another point so uh, when you're coming back how you do a decrease is to chain two and then skip that first stitch because um, we've already got our chain two and then do a normal stitch as as normal and that is your decrease on the return you may want to put a stitch marker in here um because that will denote where you make the last stitch when you come back on the next row um so you ignore that two chain completely that is now two together. hope that makes sense. It's really hard to describe. I hope, hope visually it looks better than my words say. Oh dear. We are coming up to the next colour change now. So refer to the chart that you're working from and then Always change colour, remember, on that last stitch before you want the colour change. So get yarn D, I think we're on now. Swap over so that you make this next stitch in yarn D. But it's only one stitch, so already you want to go over to the pink, which is yarn B. And then there's two more, according to our chart, two more stitches. And then now only this one, one stitch is pink. The next one is this greeny chartreuse colour. So I just slip stitch it through like that. When you get to the end of your pattern, when you get to the end of your shawl and, and you've finished, you won't really notice it. So we want three. So you just sort of make sure your tension is really nice and not massively tight, but just, just right. So gentle pull on that and then you won't really notice that change. So it's just three stitches before we go back to the grey. And then keeping an eye on those last two stitches 
So there's your decrease two with the one stitch at the top and there's the next stitch and that's where you make your two together decrease. I'll tell you what we can do now cut that yarn bee that's an extra yarn thread in the way we do not need more threads getting in our way on this project Continue in the pattern until you're at the end. We're not quite there yet, but almost. And then you just cut it off, obviously, and um, fasten off. So it's super it is actually the stitches themselves are quite easy but sometimes the color changes can sort of be a bit baffling but honestly um they needn't be and it's one of those things where if you have a play around get a bit of practice in it is a whole lot easier so last stitch can go in there so you finish when you've got two stitches left basically and it looks like they've been so it looks like they're two, two together. And that is it. Have I snipped that one off already? Yes. So you just sew in your ends. And then you're done. However, I do think this shawl benefits from blocking. I'm just trying to find my needle. Um, so basically, if you're using um, a wool, then that is... Um, I like to wet block so you wash it gently in some soapy water, rinse, ring so it's um, squidged dry, gently squidged. You can um, blot it in between in the folds of a towel if you like and then pin it out and leave to dry. That's my preferred method. If you're using um, cat hair, sorry, 
if you're using acrylic you can steam block it so pin it out and get that iron near it with the steam function do not touch an iron to acrylic it will melt um, but yeah for wool I prefer to wear block and that creates beautiful even stitches and a lovely drape so sew in your ends um, using your preferred method my preferred method is um, shove it anywhere um, not too fast um, sometimes go along the edge sometimes go into the rows but I I think when it comes to this kind of shawl where it's very very basic and you can see any kind of mistakes um, I don't like to crochet over my ends as I go because you can see them more easily which is hence one of the reasons why I abandoned this um, right at the beginning See, I started crocheting over them but it creates a little bit of a bulky bit and so it's not my preferred choice so anyway do that I haven't blocked this one either but you'll end up with something like that but because you're making a big version it will be much bigger than that so I hope that has helped useful links will be in the description box below let me know how you get on and um, thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions then um, you can give me a shout um, nice constructive criticism is welcome useless criticism is not okay thank you very much for watching um i'll probably see you again for a podcast more than likely rather than a tutorial because um i haven't got enough time to do many tutorials which is sad okay i'm rambling <laughs> i'm gonna go see ya bye